Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this tool bench and some of these tools from the laser kit that I have. If you haven't checked it out already, go to Crafts by Laurie for you, the number four at Etsy. So it's Crafts by Laurie for you on Etsy. And you'll be able to get this, and I'll leave the link as well below. And then um, I'm going to show you how to put it together and what all these little things are and how you can create these little tools. So for the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the kit and we're going to start putting it together. When you get your kit, it's going to be a lot of pieces. Don't get overwhelmed. This is not going to be like one of those kits that you buy that you open a box and you never put it together. This is going to be a very easy build and um, I'll show you how you do it. So you should have a piece that's just a regular square and then you should have some that are like little strips. Don't confuse them with the two that are together here. This is a separate set. These two are exactly the same size and one has a square cut out in it. So keep these separate from these. These are narrower. And, you know, you might think they're the same, but they're really not. If you notice, this is just a tiny bit longer. And I'll package these separately, so make sure you keep those separate. All right. Now, the first thing you need to do is take the little strips that you have. And I'm just using some crazy glue because it's quick. And it sets up rather, you know, fast, so... That's why I'm using that. Now you want to take the long pieces and you want to go ahead and put them all the way down to the end and then all the way to the edge. Okay, once you have that done and that's even with this edge, then you want to go ahead and do the next side on the right. And then go right across the bottom. Now the shorter of the two is the one that you want to put in here first. I'm dipping the end of this so that it can stick to the side of that. Be certain not to get your finger. Push it down even with the ground. Don't worry, that paper will come off when you wet it. All right, and now this one is gonna go even with the ground and then make sure it's even right along here on this edge. Now when you get done, you should have something that looks sort of like a picture frame. Now next step is to go ahead and put a line of glue there at the top and then I oh, wrong one this time I'm gonna do the edge just a tiny bit there and just a tiny bit there and then I'm gonna squish it right in there and it should be even at the top if you lined it up properly and then you should have a box just like that All right, now that you've done that, I'm gonna take these tools off of here so that you can see. Now that you've done that, this is how I've lined my tools up. You can follow this as a guide or you don't have to. Um, you can do it the way you want, but how you line them up is how you need to put your stick pens. So 
so because that's how I did mine I went across all the way at the top and then on the second row second one down I went here and then I went to the third row and the fourth one over I added three so filled every hole here one in the second row and three in the third row that's how the tools fit for me if you want to rearrange your tools differently that's fine I don't recommend you putting one in every single one because then it's gonna block your tools from hanging so like I couldn't put this on this peg because that peg down there is in the way so consider where you want your tools before you do this all right now for that part you're going to take your stick pen they have these at like the local walmart or craft store or whatever and, but i buy them on amazon because you get like tons of them i will include these in the kit um until this box is gone but after that then i can't guarantee you that the stick pens will be in the kit because i don't know if i can get them in bulk like this again and i'm sure I'd have to raise the price if I can't so I don't want to do that to you guys all right so now for the stick pens you're going to take the stick pen put it in here now I'm holding it over just a little bit about an eighth of an inch and if you don't know what an eighth of an inch is take one of the little tools that you have or one of the pieces because they're eighth of an inch thick and you can kind of line it up with that and get an idea. And once you did, then you just bend that over in the back. Just bend it. Do that for all of them. Okay, once you have them all in there, they're all flat when you flip it over. But then when you go back, it's kind of, you see how they're not? Okay. So have them all in then what you want to do is go along the back side while they're all in and just hit each one of them with a little bit of crazy glue and then do it rather quickly before the glue sets up and then poke them back in that hole until they're flat where you bent it You can wipe off any remaining glue if you want to. You don't have to because it's going to be hidden. All right. Once you have that, then you want to take it on something that's safe to press on and press down. All right. Once you've done that, this one needs a little bit more glue. Then you should be good. To do the next step now this step you're going to need to get this yourself it's a um, small piece of gorilla tape and it's just gorilla duct tape and the reason why i do this is just to kind of keep them from wiggling it didn't take quite enough off of there And it also helps me from not poking my fingers because if you're like me you will poke yourself at least once when messing with any kind of stick pen this is just left over so I'm just kind of putting it on there because it's not going to be seen okay now if you don't have the ability to get duct tape, that's the Gorilla Tape, and I use that because it's really, really sticky, um, you can just go ahead and put whatever tape you want over it. It's just basically keeping your fingers from 
hitting it and keeping them in place as well while you're finishing up everything. All right, after you've done that, now the next step is to go ahead and line this with your glue. And again, I'm using the super glue because it sets up really quickly, but I will tell you, if you do not have it exactly like it is, you're not gonna get this apart once you put it together. So you may wanna use like some regular wood glue. So if you don't put it together exactly right the first time, you're not gonna get a second chance with super glue, where with wood glue you will. All right, so now I've got it lined up at the bottom and I'm gonna sandwich these two together. And then I'm wiping off the edge as I go because the crazy glue sticks to everything. Moving over off the paper. Sorry, it's out of your way, but I'm just basically pushing it down and making sure all my edges are flat. All right, now I'm going to take these little binder clips because they work great for this. And I'm going to clip it together. All right, while that's drying, I'm going to take the baby wipe and I'm going to go ahead and wipe off the edges to remove the burn marks. That's just the nature of the beast when you're dealing with laser. If you've got any crazy glue on there and it's not coming off when you're wiping it, you can take like a very fine sandpaper and lightly sand that off of there. That's the other thing about using the regular glue, you don't get the crazy glue on there. All right, so everything there is as it should be. Now you have two pieces that look like this. And again, you can wipe off this laser mark if you want. It's not gonna show but you can wipe it off. All right, for this piece, you're gonna put a little bit of glue here and very carefully put some glue right along the edge here. Try not to get a lot because what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up having too much, like that was just too much, so I'm gonna wipe some of that downward to get it off. And it's gonna bleed through and you don't want that. Now you're going to put this right in that hole and you want to make sure you square it up. You can use your square up tool or you can use a block of wood or something. But that goes in there just like that. Now this one you're going to do the same thing, put a little bit on the bottom. And just a little bit along that edge, and a little bit along that edge. And then you're gonna slide it in there. Sure you got it nice and square now for this next part you're gonna end up putting glue along here right along here right along here and then across the top of this piece Make sure you have it on a flat surface. And you're gonna press that in there like that. It should be even with the bottom so that this isn't gonna end up being wonky. Double check and make sure you're still square. Do the same thing for the other side some glue on there, glue on the top here, and 
and glue across the bottom. And then there you've completed the workbench, just like that. Now, for the vise and the bottom baseboard of the workbench, this is gonna fit in here. So now you're just gonna go ahead and put a little bit there. I'm gonna dip this in here because I always have too much and spread it out that way. I'm gonna make this nice and even with the bottom board. So that's gonna be glued in there and it's even along here. Now, this piece here is going to go in here, and you got to put it in even. And you're going to put glue here and here. All right, now you're going to put some crazy glue across the top of here or wood glue a little bit here if you did not make this square this piece will not fit so you'll have to sand it if you made it square it should fit Now, for the vise, we're going to go ahead and put that together. You're going to get a small piece like this. You need to cut a tiny piece of it off to fit right here. Let's see, oh, that's a little too thick. Let me make a thinner one. I like the 3 in 1 multi cut tool for this stuff because it is like really e you know, easy to mess with. All right, and then you're gonna just glue that right there above that square. If you don't have the multi-cut tool, then you can use your little hacksaw for that part. Once you have it there and it's above it, then you're going to take this and you need to paint this first. Otherwise, you'll never get it painted. I'm just using a paint marker. After you painted that, then you need to find this really long, skinny piece, and you need to paint that as well. And again, I'm just using this paint marker. I got it off of Amazon. It's a metallic, so it shines really nice with the silver. I really like it. And it covers it in one layer. So that's nice and it's fast to dry too I believe they're just acrylic if I can find where I bought it um, like the buyer I'll put it below but 
I bought them a long time ago, so I'm not sure if I'll still be able to locate that in my shop or in my history. Okay, now the block is going to go down on both. So here's a tricky part. I have mine sideways, but if you want yours vertical, you can. I like mine like this. So just check it and verify that it fits both ways, which it should because it's laser cut. And sideways looks like that. Vertical would be obviously vertical. Okay, now that that is like that, you need to take a little bit of sandpaper and just roll around your little wooden dowel. Give that little end just a tiny bit of roundness to it. I made this so it fits nice and snug. So it's going to give you a little bit of an issue if you don't do this. And if you don't do this, you could end up breaking the little vice grip. You don't want to do that. Okay, once you've got it started, get your pliers and you're just going to screw it in kind of like back and forth. Again, I made this tight because I didn't want it to come out. But it looks like that. Now, put it in one and two. Make sure everything fits. I like to leave about an eighth of an inch in between here. So in that case, take a piece that you have that's an eighth of an inch thick and just set it in there. And I like to leave about an eighth of an inch there. So you can take another piece from the tool bench and you can set it in there if you like. Now, once you've done that, take it all back out and line that with a little bit of crazy glue. I'm going to turn it upside down. That way it doesn't drip down in my internal side of this. Oop, I just dropped everything. That's okay. I, I already know where it goes. Alright, now I'm going to take this. And I'm going to put it back in there. Just like that. Now I'm going to pull that one forward there. And I'm going to put a little bit of crazy glue right on that edge. So that this bottom one sticks to it. Only the one in the back. And then there you have your vise. That's got to stick to it. It's not dry yet. But basically you're attaching this piece to the back here. And then this piece goes on the front. And then it moves forward and back. On a real vise, this would rotate and turn. But there's no way to really do that with something this small with just doing the wood without adding other components. So that works for me. All right, now this bench is completely done. Nothing else to do to that. Nice finish side. Nice finish back. And then you can wipe that off or sand it off where it's stuck to the paper. All right, now to do our 
tiny little toolbox. I painted this one red because I just, I don't know, I just really think it looks cute red. And when I see a toolbox, that's what I think of. First thing you need to do is take your little wooden stick. You should have enough for to cut it in half and use it for both. And you're going to wiggle it right in there the same way we did that one. See how it's right in there? Don't break it. Now, you want to go ahead and take this and measure it, okay, but put one little block underneath of it because you need that thickness there. And then that is where the next one will get cut. take that cut in and I'm gonna just kind of go over it a little bit with the sandpaper now I'm going to wiggle that into there the same way just like that now there's two sides here you have one that's going to be just a tiny bit wider and then two that are going to be the same size you want to grab this one that's the smaller one and you want to go ahead and put a little bit of glue here and a little bit of glue there now you're going to fit that right in there on that side push it flat down and then I like to turn it over and push it flat down that way. That way I'm getting it flat on both sides and it's even at the bottom. Next, you're gonna go ahead and line right here and right there and there with crazy glue. Then you're gonna take the wider of the two and you're gonna slide that right down in that spot. Now, I'm gonna push it back in there. Make sure I've got it nice and even. Make sure all my sides are together because you know the top can be a little funny at times, depending on how you put that piece in. You don't wanna have too much left over. Okay, now the other piece, we're gonna just fit right in that hole that has that opening. Just like that. And that should be even on all four sides. people on the bottom and I just wanted to take it off that way all right so then there's our little toolbox and I just pulled that out a little bit to make sure it's there all right and you can paint it beforehand I painted mine beforehand and I only did the exterior or you can paint it after, it's up to you. If you're using paint pens, you're not gonna be able to get inside of this thing with paint pens. All right, so that's how that's done. Now to work on the tools. This is a little bit tricky, but if you do this um, properly, you will be able to get almost two full sets from the tools that I have included from the one set. So we'll start with the saw first. Okay, here is the saw. And as you notice, my saw is not that thick. 
Now the reason that is, is because I cut my saw. Do not do this with your fingers. You need to use pliers or something when you're doing it. You wanna line it down the middle. Make sure you have it right even in the middle of it and get it started. And because you're going with the grain, it should do it pretty easy. And see how it's like right in there? Now I'm going to turn it upward. As you can see, I'm keeping my finger far away. a thin piece and a thick piece right so now you can just take that and you can just lightly sand it At this point, you want to go ahead and paint it silver if you're going to paint it silver. Remember, if you decide to split these to get more out of it and to make them thinner, do not put your fingers anywhere near it because you could potentially cut yourself and that's not going to be fun. Alright, now you've got two that look like this. I've included two, that way if you split the saw you could use both pieces and if you don't then you just throw the other one away. smaller pieces go a lot easier. All right, so they're pretty close to the same. Now you want to go ahead and paint that whatever color you're going to paint it. I'm going to use this red. And I'm painting the side that is not the cut side. Mind you, they've got to be mirrored, so make sure you paint the side that is not cut. The middle where it's cut, you need that to stay brown. See how that's nice and flat, and then that's flat. After it's on there, you can do the trim right around it. Go ahead and apply a little bit of crazy glue. It's got a notch in there, so you need the notch to go with the notch that's on there. And so I can get it even. I'm going to hold it like this and then fold it into it. Try not to get your finger stuck in it. And I'm going ahead really quickly without letting this dry. You want to let yours dry. But it is 1 o'clock in the morning here. And I get up at 5 with my grandson. So 
I am making this tutorial pretty late because it seems like I never get time to do it during the day anymore. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Now once it's completely dry, then you can go back over it and get the edges. Also, I have these crates, um, they're milk and veggie crates. You can buy those in a separate kit and they fit perfectly underneath of the toolbox. Or you can put a shout back or something there. Here's the extra one, you can do that with the other one if you like, I'm not gonna do that on camera. All right, same thing goes with the square. This one is going to be a little bit trickier though, I'll tell you that. I'm going to go ahead and start it very carefully. Once it's started, I'm going to stop. my finger away at all times and then there you have it and again you have to sand it really really well and I'm not gonna sand and paint all these on camera for you because it's late but this is what two of them looks like after I split it just sand them down and there you have your square Next is the ruler. I don't know if you can see that it's got little indentations to kind of simulate the lines on a ruler. You're going to do the same thing again. I'm keeping my finger very far away from that. And I turned it. And then I'm going to just very carefully go down. And then there I've made a thinner ruler and you want to sand it out. Now obviously the back side of that one will not have the lines. The hammer, you're going to keep it as is. I made a small hammer and a large hammer. Now, you just want to kind of go around like a little circle. Just to round that off a little bit. And it just gives it a little bit of roundness, not too much. Because hammers aren't perfectly round. And then that's all you do, and then paint it. Here is that hammer that I did. This hammer, same thing. sand those edges now this one I'm not doing in a round motion just because it's got a different type of handle on it and I think it would be better just like that but there you go there's that one and there's that one This level, I did not cut. The plane, I did not cut. I painted the entire thing gold and then I took 
silver to simulate a blade on the bottom side. The wrenches I did cut. However, the wrenches are very, very tricky because they're very thin at the top and bottom. So you have to go very, very gently. Do not do a lot of pressure. If you do a lot of pressure, you're going to break it. Like, see, I just did that. Keeping my finger away from the blade, so I'm not going to ruin the other half. But don't do pressure, because if you do pressure, then you will snap it like I just did. But paint it silver, and then you have a wrench. That's thin, and there's three of them. Three different sizes. So practice on your wrenches or leave them as is. Now, the pliers, you can try and thin them, but if you do, you have to thin them by going down from the top. Otherwise, they just break. Just like that. The square, this one I've already split and I didn't print a second one, but you basically put the long end on the bottom and then just would go down like that the same way. Do not put your fingers near it, though. The screwdriver, you have to cut it the same way. Hold it flat. Make sure your blade is even. And then there you'd have two screwdrivers. Once you've done that, then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and take the screwdriver and sand it, which I already stuck it in there, but just go around with the edges like we did the hammer. Now this is a blade, or supposed to be a blade. Ooh, almost lost it. I think my knife is getting dull. I think that's the problem because I didn't have any issue cutting any of these earlier. But I've been using this knife all day to cut wood. And then you just go down and then you cut it. And then you got two blades. Now to get the silver in the middle, that's just a little piece of um, paper I stuffed in there and then cut it. I mean, colored it. Here's another ruler and another pair of pliers. And then this is supposed to be a tape measure. So you just put it up there like that. You don't cut that.
All right, so I'm gonna set these tools up on here and that way you can kind of see them on the new workbench. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this last roller. Alright, well, thanks for watching. Again, I will put the link below to this um, kit. And uh, I hope you like it. Keep an eye out for the garage because that's what's going to be next. I'm in the middle of doing that now. Um, it's in its final stages. I have decided that I want to do an opening door. So that's the part that um, I'm working on right now. Everything else in the garage is completed. I just have to get that door going and it will be ready for my shop. So which will kind of be cool because I made it extra long um, so that I could have a workshop in the back of it. And it'd be kind of fun to have like a little workshop for the dollhouse since I don't have one and I definitely don't have a garage yet. So it'd be interesting to see how um, it looks next to the dollhouse and I'm also working on a couple of shops and stuff as well and there's a few things already oh sorry I'm yawning on you guys um there's a few things already in my shop that uh you guys can get there's like a laundry room there is a couple beds a greenhouse a really pretty greenhouse and uh, some helper tools. I didn't use the helper tools during this because it was pretty much a really simple thing, but I'll show you what I have for the helper tools and then I'm gonna head off of here and I will see you in the next video. You can get these on my shop as well. There's a couple kinds on there, a couple sets. These basically help you keep things square and straight when you're doing it to make sure that things are square. Then you have some wall tools that are on there. Um, helps you spread the glue if you're doing wallpaper and helps you thin them out. Some of these things are from other kits that I've done that's like helper tools for that. And, You'll see that when you watch that video for those kits. But here's another square. And these are pretty cool. I mean, I don't know if you can really see the coloring, but the really hot pink. I love hot pink. And again, you can see, you know, that it's squared up. And there's a couple different sizes with that as well. Um, these are, again, the glue spreaders for wallpaper. Or you can use them for the outside of like a dollhouse if you're wanting texture. And there's a flat one and now some different teeth, another flat one. This is great for using as a spacer in a drawer and the corners are notched out so that the glue doesn't stick to it. So like when you stick it in there, you would have that corner that would have glue in it, but, and this isn't a drawer obviously, but then that glue doesn't get to the corner of it. And you can still square up that drawer so that it's not crooked. And then you have some other little squares that you have. You can kind of go like that. Or you can see if it's square by holding it in like that. There's a lot of good uses for these little squares. I mean, they come in various sizes in the helper tool. And then this is a different angle square. And then this is a larger square. Like you would use that for something like that. And these here tools, you get them at the craft store, I mean at the hardware store in actual size, and they're ginormous, which is too big for miniature doll housing. So that's why I made this set because, or these sets, because I just 
I got tired of trying to square things up and things just being too bulky and big. Um, here's a spacer that would give you the space. So like if you wanted to space out something at an eighth of an inch, then there you would have it. If you want to space it out at a quarter of an inch, there you have it. You just put the spacers together and it gives you the exact measurement of the thickness that you need. This is a wallpaper spreader or a glue wiper. So you get in the corners where there's glue and you've got too much, you go like that and it pulls it off, which is pretty nice out of the corner. That way you don't have too much. Or if you need to get down in there really like that, you can do that. It's just, basically it's just like a little tool to help you get stuff done. If you want the glue to round up to the edge, like I do a lot with the um, dressers, then you would put this tool in there and go around the edge and it kind of reminds you of like a little caulking corner and it would round that glue into a corner. This just tells you the different sizes. So like if you're looking for an inch, three quarter, half, one quarter or one eighth and you're not sure what dowel size it is, that helps you with that. And it gives you that information that you might not know. This again is another corner spreader. You would just go right in there and get that wallpaper up into the corner or glue out of the corner either way. These tools are pretty cool because they're made for one eighth inch in the middle and then they help you square up a drawer between a drawer or something that is needing to be squared up where you need to have two. And the same way with this one. This is basically an L square multiplied so if you needed to see if it's square on both ends there you have it obviously this one's already put together so it wouldn't work this one is a square tool with a spacer as well so that would give you like if you look at that that gives you the thickness in between and then you would have both of them square this is a drawer spacer so you would put this behind the drawer when you're spacing it so that the glue doesn't touch the back when you're gluing it. But there's lots of them and there's other um, videos and stuff that I've done on these that you can look at as well and get a little bit more in depth with it. And just check it out. It's Crafts For You by Laurie or Crafts By Laurie For You on Etsy. And I'll leave the link below as well. But thanks a lot. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And this little kit here will be in the shop. Just check it out. So thanks a lot. See you next time.